Just know that the SPD was the big left party for decades. On to their right wing rival. Die Christlich Demokratische Union. The Christian Democratic Union. Like Christian. It even has like a religion attached to it as well. Oh, I love you more than words can say. Yeah, 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 guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, Yeshiri Shay, the very one and the only Ich bin Shady Shay, the Anasigar. So, guys, today, um, I had a comment from Lucas Bender saying, Hey, if you're also interested in German politics, I just made a video about that. We've got a big election coming up this Sunday, so you might want to check that out, guys, okay? So, without saying too much, guys, let's check this out, guys, okay? Let's check this out. I'm very curious about Germany, as you guys know already, because growing up, I've always believed that the UK was the greatest nation in the world, America second, and then I got to hear about Germany, and um, I'm really intrigued at Germany. I'm really, really intrigued. I'm not going to lie. So, guys, let's continue exploring, okay? But before we start this video, you know what to do. Smash like, subscribe, give me some love, and let's do this, guys. So, bro, just take a subscribe, okay? I'm going to check you out some more and a like as well. So, German political parties explained. The political parties in Germany, who are they? Okay. What do they do? And what do people think of them? Well, uh -huh. let's find out. Let's go. Lucas Bender. So, until there are dozens of parties in Germany, but for national politics, we can focus on just six. Okay. Seven if you're a pedantic know it all. And how do we know these six are the important ones? Well, they're the only ones with seats in the national parliament. The other ones are rather too small to get in or too regional to matter. I'm sorry, oh, Magdeburger Gartenpartei? We're here for the big guys. <laughs> Just like most. <laughs> Sounds like the name of a restaurant. Most democracies on this planet, German politics were once dominated by two major parties one of okay. the broad, more progressive center left, and one of the broad, more conservative center right. But ah, as we like shall see, the whole the party dynamic has changed quite a bit, especially in recent years when minor parties have become much more relevant and powerful. There will be time codes for all of these, but for now, let's start with the Sozialdemokratische Partei Deutschlands (SPD). This is the supposedly okay. big party of the center left. It's the oldest party in Germany, emerging from socialist movements of the 1860s before moderating into what it is today. If you're familiar with any of the many labor parties around the world, like yeah. the UK one or the New Zealand one yeah. or the Dutch the UK one, Dave von Arbeid, you probably have a good idea of the SPD's basic profile. So basically, if I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote for SPD then. <laughs> is that what you mean? Which is being the party of solidarity. A kind of solidarity, solidarity. that's expressed by a strong welfare state focusing on the working class as well as overall social mm -hmm. and economic justice. Yeah. Accordingly, their main focus has always been on the blue-collar worker, you know, your coal miner, metal worker, cleaner, hands-on kind of jobs. But these days, they're really struggling to keep that aura of the grand old workers' party alive. You oh. might be getting different explanations for why that is, depending on if you're talking to a more left-wing social democrat or a more mm. pragmatic moderate. Those two wings of the party tend to clash from time to time. But mm -hmm. either way, just know that the SPD was the big left party for decades. On to okay. their right-wing rival. Die Christlich-Demokratische Union. The Christian Democratic Union. Like Christian. It even has like a religion attached to it as well. Okay, let's go. CDU. The CDU is a juggernaut in German politics. Most okay. of our chancellors have been CDU, which makes them the sort of default. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. No. Angela Merkel. I can't pronounce her name, Angela Merkel. Yeah, her. So she's CDU. Ah. A power party, but just like the SPD, they're the shy and starting to wear <laughs> off a little. When foreigners hear the name Christian Democratic Union, they often think that it's a sort of hardline religious group, which is yeah. really clear, it's definitely not. No, oh. they're just sort of culturally Christian, right? So moderately conservative, sort of the more regressive, cautious force, in line with many of the right-wing parties across the continent. Traditionally, they're made up of social Christians, economic liberals, and conservatives. And no, I didn't just come up with these categories. No, the party quite ostentatiously advertises with these three pillars of the union. But So why did they have Christian in their name? They should just remove Christian and put a different thing. Because as soon as you see Christian, the first thing that comes to your mind is religion. It's like calling an MDU, Muslim Democratic Union. Anyway, I'm not judging, I'm just saying from a layman point of view, someone hearing this for the first time, that's what's going to think. It's going to be like, oh, they're all church girls, they're all Christian, yeah? Okay, maybe all Christians are going to vote for them then. 
but you won't be wrong just calling them the Conservative Party of Germany. As such, the most concerned with things like public safety, tradition, uh, frugal spending, things like that. Mm. Oh, and overall, they're quite moderate, which has won them many elections, but just like with the SPD, there's a growing desire from the more ideological wing of the party to become more unapologetically conservative again. Okay, okay so I far see. so easy, right? Two parties split along the mm. standard Western left right divide. And the thing is, we would have almost been stuck with that two party system if it weren't for. Die Freie Demokratische Partei, FTP. Okay. Yeah, this little guy has always managed to squeeze in. <laughs> the word free should have already given away what the Free Democrats stand for freedom. Or if you want to be fancy, we could also call it liberalism. I was about to say the Liberal Democrats in the UK. Yeah. How exactly that freedom is defined may vary between the different factions of the party. You know, you've got your social liberals, economic liberals, and national liberals, which is okay. what we call the sort of right-wing libertarian kind of liberal. But really, these differences are minuscule. The important bit is they all agree that the individual should be at the center of all policy. That makes them mm. both very open and progressive in a kind of okay. we shouldn't okay. tell other people how to live stance, as well as very capitalist. So they're all about lower taxes, decreasing bureaucracy, and competition. If you mm. are into that sort of politics, chances are that you're from a sort of upper middle class to upper class household. Maybe you're a big shot business person or self-employed or you founded one of these trendy hipster startups. Or at least that's the sort of person that usually votes for the FTP. Well, that and farmers. Now, I already mentioned <laughs> that the FTP a was much, sort of the... A much but it's an honest day's work reason we didn't end up with a two-party system, and I mean that quite literally. There were a few decades when we only had three parties in parliament, the two big ones and then the FDP as the small third. Okay, let's talk about FDP. Like, the idea behind the FDP sounds really good, putting the individual at the center of their policies. It sounds really, really good. But then I trust there are some big-time downsides to that. Third option. But don't think small equals unimportant. No, that was actually a really comfortable situation for the FDP to be in, because they okay. alone could choose who would rule the country. I mean, Is obviously that... not alone oh, alone, okay. but the success of okay. the FDP always made it so that neither like of coalition the two government. parties could get an outright majority. And that's how mm. the Liberals earned the rather unflattering title of the Kingmaker, who's only there to break the tie. Oh, I see. But these so days they're, they're really the trying to get away from that image by highlighting their tech savviness, for example. Bündnis 90, die Grünen. Next up are the Greens, who came in much, 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 much later. Like the Greens, the Green Party. The, 80s here. the Greens are actually quite different from all of the other parties, since they grew out of these protest movements from the late 60s to late 70s, who advocated for all sorts of issues like women's rights, uh, anti-war, anti-nuclear power, and obviously okay. environmentalism. And they kept that revolutionary spirit going even after they upgraded to a proper party. Like, look, look at them. Look how uncomfortable he is. All those high-class politicians suddenly sitting next to literal hippies knitting in parliament. Now, obviously the old parties weren't happy with those. Yeah, they look like they're in the streets. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, they look like they just came off the streets, bro. They haven't got that political standing, that political aura about them. Yeah, they've got that rawness. Look how uncomfortable he is. All those high-class politicians suddenly sitting next to literal hippies knitting in parliament. Now, mm. obviously the old parties weren't happy with those green weirdos. I okay. bet they don't even shower, they'd say. But then came a time in which the liberals firmly placed themselves at the right hand of the conservatives. Suddenly the Labour Party was without a partner. Mm. Uh. I think you can see where this is going. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. It's like baby. Green guy. Baby. Uh, I didn't mean what I said about Baby. You not showering. Baby. Mm -mm. You actually mm -mm. can smell quite nice. Mm -mm. Love, love. And that's going <laughs> to be what's been considered kind of the natural state of German <laughs> politics ever since. A red-green alliance as counterweight against a liberal conservative one. Since then, the Greens have undergone a sometimes messy evolution, with lots of infighting between their more left fundamentalist wing called the Fundis and their more moderate, sometimes even conservative wing, the Realos. However, that division okay. seems to disappear a little, since the Greens have grown so much in the recent years, like, they've become massively popular, at least hmm. for the time being. Okay, interesting. They're still a very explicitly feminist party and fairly interventionist economically, but they try to soften the edges a bit to seem more appealing to a wider audience. It's 1989, David ha 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm not too into politics. When it comes to politics, I'm not like too deeply into that. But I just think that the that the, the Tories are a bit too stern, a bit too strict, okay? They haven't got that softness, that human touch. And that's one reason why I lean more towards Labour. But I don't vote Labour all the time, but I lean more towards Labour, okay? Because they just have that thing like they do actually care. It's 1989. David Hasselhoff has just torn down the wall. East and West will finally reunite. What a major historical event. You'd expect the end of the Cold War to be a pretty big political earthquake, wouldn't you? One that's surely mm. going to leave its mark on the German party system. But okay. remarkably, it wasn't. The few parties that did emerge from the New East were quickly sucked up by their already existing Western counterparts. Just like basically everything about the East. The only exception is Die Linke, <laughs> which is the Eastern party. So you might already be aware that East Germany was a dictatorship for 40 years. It was ruled in this very repressive way by one single party, the Socialist Unity Party, or SED. But here's the thing, when the wall fell and East Germany... Socialist Unity Party, is that what it said? The Socialist Unity Party, SED, it's not supposed to be SUP. The party, or SED. But here's the thing, when the wall fell and East Germany finally got some proper democracy, that party was not outlawed. No, it got to continue in the United Germany, but now reduced from a singular, unopposed regime to just one of many contenders in the democratic process. One okay. with minimal success. Turns out having led a dictatorship doesn't actually sound good on your resume. No. So in order to rebrand itself, the SED no. quickly changed its name to PDS, the Party of Democratic Socialism. The old Western parties were, of course, very much opposed to this new party, like even more so than against the Greens. But by this time, the PDS had already assumed a new role that of the niche interest party for Eastern Germans. Turns out many people from the East were nostalgic, or at least hmm. sympathetic to the SED. So even though the Eastern Bloc had collapsed, socialism was very much still on the table. A little detour. What's the difference between socialism and social democracy? Yo, why are you asking me questions? Are you a teacher? <laughs> are you a teacher? Oh my, okay, so socialism is like a government uh, run by the whole community as a whole something like that guys please don't judge me social democracy is like a system of government that's attained by democratic means by the majority choosing and voting and shady how do you know these answers in many countries the word socialism can mean a whole bunch of things from public health care to abolishing property and if the word social democracy is even used it's usually understood to be on the same spectrum as socialism but I think most Germans would probably cringe at that since historically we understand those two terms to be different categories. Okay. Now I know there are a whole bunch of scientific definitions for those words, but yeah. I think conventional wisdom in Germany has it that socialism tries to overcome capitalism, whereas social democracy tries to rein in its destructive powers. Again, you might call this just a matter of degree, but here we perceive mm. those two parties to be on different slots of the political spectrum. One of them with considerably more historical baggage. Just to finish this off, it's actually okay, quite sir. hard for me to see what kinds of factions there are within Die Linke. I mean, obviously there are all sorts of flavors of different doctrinaire socialist beliefs, with most of them belonging to a more settled professional class. But then you do mm. get the occasional nutcase who's still under surveillance of the German intelligence service. So for many people it's kind of a mixed bag. Despite that, there has been a lot yeah. of talk recently about including the Linke into the center-left alliance the together Linke. with the SPD and the Greens. The argument is that mm. we're now 30 years removed from unification and that the old mm. guard has surely given way for a new generation of socialists to emerge who have nothing to do with the old dictatorship. You know, they just okay. want to advocate for better wages and fighting poverty. But that's Change. still up for debate. Do you think it's still associated with these radical like economic all, proposals? Yeah, like all politicians. Yeah, they say things, but a lot of times they don't even do it. So in all these parties, which one is the corrupt one? Which one is the best one? Which one is the corrupt one? I don't know. Like, me, left to me, like I said before, I just... If I'm confused, yeah, about politicians, I just stick to labor. Yeah, when I'm confused, because sometimes I read the policies, I'm like, sometimes I check the manifestos, I look, I'm like, <sighs> which one should I vote for this time around? They're all making promises. And then when I'm in doubt, I just go labor. <laughs> the argument is that we're now 30 years removed from unification and that the old guard has surely given way for a new generation of socialists to emerge who have nothing to do with the old dictatorship. You know, they just want to advocate for better wages and fighting poverty. But that's still up for debate. Die Linke is still associated with these radical economic proposals, 
as well as a weird pro-Russia stance. Okay. So, we'll see. Okay, last one. Controversial. Die Alternative für Deutschland, AfD. Okay. The AfD was founded in 2013 by a bunch of right-wing conservatives who mainly campaigned on getting rid of the euro and returning to Germany's old national currency. Boring. Okay. Yes. But no, believe it or not, that was actually quite shocking. Our political parties share a large consensus, so they're all broadly for the European Union, they're all... I think if you change back to your old German currency, the Deutschmark, oh, your economy is going to suffer a bit. Yeah, I mean, the value of the Deutschmark is still going to be really high, but your economy is going to suffer. It's going to suffer because then trade, I mean, it's going to be too expensive to trade with you. They're all broadly for the same economic system and they all broadly agree that climate change is really bad. And mm. now the AFD came in to, you know, shake things up a bit. Back then in 2013, I thought the AFD might become the sort of mirror image of Die Linke, where they occupy the same kind of spot in our political scene, just okay. on the opposite side. You know, one where they criticize the moderate center from a more ideological populist perspective. Hmm. That didn't happen. Instead, what happened was that the AFD was quickly taken over by far-right extremists with overt ties to neo-Nazi organizations with just despicably racist, homophobic, revisionist beliefs. The supposedly no. conservative side of the party has for the most part been on board with this partnership. Although some have left out of protest, including the original founder of the party, which can never be a good sign. Yeah, and you can imagine that <laughs> he they left. style us themselves as a sort of fighters against SJW culture, they're hard on immigrants, they are the only rescue for a dying Germany. And that would be the good right, like, maybe mm. the conservatives are too mild, maybe we did need a more staunchly right-wing party in parliament. But there's this vicious anti-democratic tendency that permeates the entire party, which is just sad. Sounds terrible. And yeah, in case you're wondering, the other parties have erected a giant wall between themselves and the AFD, deeming them basically untouchable. Will the mm. AFD actually gain power? Like, maybe someday, but not now. Like, mm. if the Greens or the Linke have taught us anything, then that with more moderation, you will gain power in Germany. Okay. If you don't moderate, you're out. <laughs> don't fall. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Sorry, I didn't exactly end this on a high note. Interesting. I? I still hope you had fun and hopefully you now understand a little bit more about sort of German politics. Just thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay civil in the comments, like obviously. Don't battle to the death. It's <laughs> just YouTube. And yeah, love yourself. Bye. <laughs> I love his closing. I love this clue. He said, "Love yourself. <laughs> it's very important because if you don't love yourself, you can't love somebody else." Okay, I've listened to everything he said. Everything, everything, everything. All the parties that he's talked about, they kept deviating a bit from their original motto, their original manifesto. They deviated a bit, changed a bit. Imagine even the founder of the AFD left. He was like, "I'm your dad, but you're abandoned." Anyway, guys, long and short, I'm not into politics at all. I'm not into politics at all. First, I was more labor, but then, uh, I don't know, politicians are usually politicians. So now what I started doing was listening to the manifestos, listening to the new policies, listening to all the promises they make, and then try to decide, okay, which one am I gonna stick with? But so far from everything he said here, I don't know, I sort of like the liberal. Okay, I like the liberals because they seem to focus on the individual, but then they support capitalism. Mm. I mean, as much as capitalism, you know what? Let's not talk about that. Anyway, basically, if I'm going to stick to a party here, uh, I think being moderate sounds good. Yeah, not far right, not too right. Being moderate sounds nice. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll stick with SPD. Who knows? CD, CDC, <laughs> Center for Disease Control. Sorry, not CDC. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a CDU with uh, the Tories. Anyways, we about to share the one and only guys. It's nice to know and have an insight into your political parties. I see that it's very, very similar to the UK's. Very, very, very similar. And um, 
yeah thank you lucas bender for this okay i really appreciate it guys i really appreciate you guys do let me know what you think in the comment section also do let me know what parties you think are best to vote on sunday because i hear you guys are having an election on sunday okay guys do let me know what party you think are the best okay it's been your boy share the one and only also make sure you smash like subscribe give me some love it's gonna be a peace out for me guys Love you more than words can say You are me Oh, you are the light that shine in my way You are me Oh, I love you more than words can say You are me Oh, you are the light that shine in my way